Welcome back to 28storms.com late on this Thursday, June 7th. This is not only an update on the tropical weather situation across the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific, but also a look at the flood potential that may develop over the southeast over the next five days. First off, a look into the Atlantic Basin reveals that the Atlantic is remaining rather quiet, but this long wave trough over the east coast along with a short wave disturbance in the western Gulf of Mexico is going to set the stage for several inches of rainfall across the central Gulf Coast states. You can see this cutoff area of upper level low heights here along the Texas and Mexican coastline. This upper level low is going to be in no hurry over the next couple of days, but with time it will start to move more toward the northeast and that is going to help kick off several rounds of heavy rainfall. More on that in just a moment, but also looking off into the eastern Pacific for just a second, you can see that there are no tropical disturbances at this time. However, the model guidance is becoming a little bit more interesting for the five to seven day forecast period. And even in the short term, the upper level shear to the south of the Gulf of Tuanapec in the eastern Pacific, it's already rather low, and it's forecast to remain somewhat favorable over the next five to seven days with upper level ridging located just to the south of the Mexican Riviera. The only reason why we're not monitoring the eastern Pacific more closely in the short term is simply because there are no active tropical disturbances in the region, but the latest GFS forecast as we go out to days 6 and 7 does show added activity near the intertropical convergence zone, especially by 168 hours. The Canadian CMC model forecast for day 6 has a similar idea with a developing tropical low to the south of El Salvador. Next up is the ECMWF model forecast for the East Pacific and you begin to see a bit of a model consensus here as we go into the 144 hour forecast time frame we begin to see a developing area of low pressure and into day 7 through 9 this model is actually showing tropical cyclone formation and more trends in the model guidance will have to be monitored throughout the weekend. So the good news is that nothing imminent is brewing in the tropics and it looks as though the Atlantic Basin will remain calm for at least another week. Therefore the big weather story over the weekend into the start of next week will be the threat of flooding along the coastal communities of the central Gulf Coast. Now what you're looking at at this current time is a radar animation as of the midnight hour along the eastern seaboard and you can see that shower and thunderstorm activity still persists from the Carolinas extending southwestward into the Texas coastal area and the radar graphic should remain active for the foreseeable future. In fact, it looks as though the radar returns will only increase as we go into Saturday and Sunday. The National Weather Service is well aware of this flood potential and they have already considered issuing a flood watch, especially for South Alabama, Southern Mississippi extending into the Louisiana parishes. They've decided to hold off for now, but I guarantee you one will be issued here within the next 48 hours. In addition, the Hydro Meteorological Prediction Center has really amped up their rainfall forecast totals for the next five days. The first graphic is the 24-hour forecast totals, and these are the forecast totals for day two. And you can see they remain high and only increase further as we go into day three. And the rainfall potential persists into days four and five. And finally, once you add up the five-day accumulations, you see that there's a 10-inch bullseye right along the Alabama and Florida Panhandle coastline. Quickly turning back to some of the more current weather data, we see that we still are dealing with this stalled-out frontal boundary along the Gulf Coast states with a surface trough extending just offshore. And this goes hand-in-hand -hand with the rainfall activity that we noted on radar just a moment ago. But this stalled out upper level low that we mentioned earlier in the video spinning about near the Brownsville coast will begin to inch a little bit more toward the north and that is going to help carry that frontal boundary more toward the inland areas once again and along with that frontal boundary we're going to see an increase in the moisture to the south of it along with those rainfall chances and the whole reason why this upper level low is going to start moving more toward the Tennessee Valley is all of this energy we see coming in from the western United States Eventually this long wave trough is going to prograde more toward the east and pick up this upper level feature that has been plaguing the Gulf Coast for quite some time, but not until it dumps a lot of heavy rainfall. And the following is the 84 hour accumulated forecast of precipitation from the NAM model. So this only goes out through Monday morning, but if you start looking at the color table, this is in excess of three to five inches along the Louisiana coastline. 
and some of the heavier rainfall potential may not be until later on in the weekend into the first half of next week, especially for Mississippi, Alabama, and the western half of the Florida Panhandle. So if you extend this forecast out just a couple additional days, this graphic would more than likely look much more similar to the HPC forecast. What you're now viewing is the GFS forecast of the low to mid-level moisture content in the atmosphere. And at this current hour, the moisture is mainly limited to the coastal areas extending southward into the Gulf of Mexico. But if we advance into the 48-hour time frame, so looking into Saturday and Saturday evening, we see a little bit more of a deepening of the low pressure area. So it's a little bit more evident in the low to mid levels, especially 700 millibars. And the moisture plume associated with, with it, it has now extended into the Tennessee Valley. And this continues into 72 hours. And you can see that this is going to be a long duration event. And you can also make out the reason why the storm is moving more toward the northeast. We're finally getting some more westerly flow across the central portion of the nation. So this long wave trough is helping to shunt everything out of the Gulf. So this is going to be more so of a flood threat rather than a severe weather maker. And you can see the reason behind this in some of the sounding data from the GFS and NAM forecast models. By the time the upper level low moves into the Gulf Coast, the mid and upper level half of the atmosphere will be just as saturated as some of the lower levels. As you can see on the sounding, some of those red and green lines which denote the temperature and dew point, they're fairly close together, which tells us that the atmospheric column is very saturated. And without dry air aloft, you're just not going to get widespread severe weather. So low-lying communities along the Gulf Coast need to be prepared for the potential for flooding and flood watches will likely go into effect by the National Weather Service here within the next couple of days and the Atlantic Basin is looking rather quiet tropically speaking but the activity may begin to pick up just a little bit as we go into the medium range out in the eastern Pacific so we're gonna keep tabs on all of these issues for you here at 28storms.com and the Hurricane Tracker app check back soon for more video updates